Social Media Week in Milan and um, we are we do this interview <laughs> in a car. In the, back, very, in the back of a car. In the back of a car, it's very strange, <laughs> so we are a little bit <laughs> shocked, but we are here. And um, uh, Ryan, can you tell me something about you, Italian people? Sure. Um, my name is Ryan Davis, and uh, my day job is I'm the executive director of social innovation at Blue State Digital, uh, which is a great firm that does uh, a, a lot of great work for clients, uh, ranging from Barack Obama to the NAACP. Uh, we worked uh, in, in France uh, on Blonde's campaign, and uh, um, just done a lot of work around the globe. And uh, the side project here that I'm talking about is the 42012, which was a marriage equality campaign uh, that I came up with with a few of my colleagues uh, in, in New York. Uh, that targeted uh, four states that had marriage equality in the ballot in November of last month. Yes, we are in Italy in a uh, very few days. We, we, we vote for uh, right. the new parliament, so, uh, and this is the first campaign, probably the first campaign that, uh, in which politics are uh, using uh, a lot of social media. But uh, um, something new. Right. I don't know if you see in uh, these uh, two days that you are arrived uh, here in Italy. Uh, what to do uh, Italian politics with social media, with the Facebook, with Twitter? What yeah. can you say? You know, I've been I've uh, I've been lucky enough to have a lot of conversations with some really smart uh, social media strategists here in Italy, and the feeling is that uh, this is the first election where uh, politicians have embraced social media, and that there's, there's one uh, candidate who's a comedian um, who has who has really embraced social media, and, and, and he's sort of the social media candidate. Uh, I think that you guys are sort of where we were in 2004. Um, so this will be like the sort of kind of test election cycle, and the next election cycle will be all out uh, as you know, uh, more and more Italians get on, on these channels. You can uh, give them some advice because yeah. they need. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think I think that it, it, candidates uh, should produce really high quality images that explain uh, their positions. They should uh, record direct to camera videos uh, addressing people very specifically and authentically about the things that they believe in. Now you can use social media to get out the vote, uh, you know, remind people to vote, where to vote, you know, uh, what time the election happens, stuff like this. Um, and, and you can use social media to respond to your supporters and amplify their, their support. Um, so there's all, I mean, it's, you know, there's all sorts of strategies that go into an effective social media plan. You know, in, in the States, we have to worry about raising money all the time, which I know is less of a, a, of a thing here. Um, so we also, you know, obviously do a lot of donation appeals uh, all over, you know, but it's, it's hard to imagine now, uh, especially after the 2008 election with, with Barack Obama, uh, an election that isn't just so focused on what, what's happening online. Mm. And uh, especially on marriage equality, that uh, uh, here it's probably the first that time that uh, marriage equality sometimes uh, right. uh, politi politicians are talking about in this campaign, but uh, for in Italy it's very different from the United States. Uh, for us it's uh, a very... Uh, something that uh, a lot of people don't understand. Right. So uh, how social media can help to, uh, to give uh, information on people about rights and uh, marriage equality? So I think the first step is showing how normal uh, gay couples are. You know, they're the same old yeah. boring relationships that everybody else has. You know, they, they go through the same, the same uh, relationship struggles and, and happinesses that everybody else does. And I think that you know, once people begin to understand that, they, they tend to ease up a little bit. Um, no one's trying to tell you your church who they can and cannot marry. You know, we're, we're talking about the idea of civil marriage here. And um, I think that once people start to see that, uh, there's also a big generational shift. So you've got people under 30 uh, across the world are much more likely to support uh, gay marriage than, than uh, you know, older people. So I think as, as that generation comes to power, we'll get to see a shift uh, there as well. Yes. And, uh, uh Example that uh, about something that we do in the uh, United States uh, on uh, marriage equality uh, on social media that uh, work very well. Sure. Um, one of the things that we found to be really successful is to provide people with uh, content that had a lot of utility. So content that had a real value that told them how they were supposed to vote in each of these four states. Because sometimes of the way you describe the the you know, it's yes or no, it doesn't. It's not always clear what is what the good vote is for marriage equality. Uh, we found that to be really useful. Uh, we found uh, celebrity quotes, uh, you know, showing that a lot of people around the, the country 
um, who are famous for whether they're in sports or entertainment or politics uh, support marriage equality. So that was a, a, a big thing for us, sharing those images, sharing those graphics. Um, and, and, and you know, discussing, I think, uh, uh, the issue of fairness, where, uh, and, and, and what, what you play is really well with Americans that we do consider ourselves you know, to try to create fairness for all on some level. Um, so, you know, showing me had a lot of images of, of these normal couples and, and the struggles they went through. We also produced a great documentary series with uh, yeah. New Left Media. Um, uh, we had each of the five, uh, each of the four states in these beautiful five-minute uh, little short docs uh, that highlighted one couple and then, and then highlighted a, um, a person fighting for marriage equality. And in that, you just saw the, how normal these people are, how, how their desire was for, for marriage was incredibly normal based on love and mutual respect and the same things that a straight couple would so It's really no different. Yes, this thing you gave me and say you kept it. Same for Italy. <laughs> same, same things. It would be great. I, I, you know, <laughs> I, I think. So. I mean, I think that you know, we'll see what we're seeing in Europe, with France, and the UK. Um, well, I know it's not directly uh, comparable to, to Italy. You know, there is definitely movement now outside of the countries like uh, Denmark and Sweden that you know do everything first. Uh, you know, I think you're, the fact you see the UK and France moving to marriage equality is a sign of things to come. Okay. okay. Uh, which is your favorite American campaign? My favorite American yes. campaign? Uh, the last one? Or? Oh, I mean, in terms of the most fun, um, my, my first campaign in 2004 mm -hmm. uh, was, I worked for Howard Dean, who was the Vermont governor, who ran for president, and he was very against the war in Iraq at the time, which was a big issue for me. He was for universal health care, and he was for uh, civil unions, mm -hmm. uh, not even for gay marriage, which made him like a radical at that time in 2004. Um, so, uh, I think, you know, I learned a lot about politics. I got to visit most of the country. It's a big country, so I got to go see most of it. And uh, it's really when I started to learn how digital could be used to organize for political uh, uh, good. And actually, the company I work for um, came out of the, the Dean campaign. Two of our co-founders, uh, uh, Joe Rosfars and, and, and Yasha, uh, were both worked on the web team and they came right out uh, of that and started this company. So in a lot of ways, that's my favorite campaign because I'm the most involved with it. But also, it, it sort of began the, the internet explosion in American politics. How do you become a conservative? Uh, you know, my, my story is, 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 is sort of unique. It's sort of the Howard Dean story. I mean, I, uh, I, I was very angry about the war in Iraq, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I was doing a lot of theater stuff in New York, and I, I literally just uh, sublet my apartment and drove to Burlington, Vermont, knocked on the door and said, you know, I'd love, I'd love to come work with this guy and help make Howard Dean president. Mm -hmm. I didn't have that much uh, campaign experience. I had digital experience. I've always been mm -hmm. sort of um, and then once I got back from that campaign, uh, there, there weren't that many people in the political space at the time who understood digital, and so I had a I could go from campaign to campaign pretty easily. So that's how I became. I heard that uh, you are also for theater. Is that yeah. Correct? Yeah. My my you know my my education is in, is in theater direction. I'm a, I'm a heck of a theater director. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, 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 and and you know, but what we do online, what we do digitally, is tell stories. Mm -hmm. What theater is about is telling stories. So. Whenever I'm thinking about a good digital campaign, there's always a story at the beginning, the middle, and an end. Uh, elections have that built in. The end is winning or losing. Um, but with brands and, and nonprofits, you have to sort of create that. Narrative. So I, I find it challenging and interesting, and, and it's still about telling a good story. But, uh, political and theater are not so different. No, not so different. Not so different. It's, uh, it's useful for a uh, political to study or to theater or something. Uh, yeah, I, I think that. I was thinking about uh, the King George. Well, if you if you <laughs> if you if you look at um, the Republican National Convention versus the Democratic National Convention, and the quality of those as theater pieces, you can really tell who's got the more artistic uh, uh, support. You know, Obama just this beautiful, well produced event, and, and the Republicans were sort of choppy and weird, and you know, you felt like the stage was going to fall apart at any moment. So, uh, you know, definitely having having cre uh, a creative background is really useful in politics and, and understanding how to communicate with people is just something that uh, you know it's super useful. I mean. Ronald Reagan was an actor. Yes. And he was yes. uh, one of the more popular presidents left of the year. So. It all, it all, it all Italy, we have a lot of actors. That yes. Can, uh, yes. <laughs> actor, sportsman. Yeah. Just pull a Sony and actor. Yes. Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. Yes. <laughs> a lot of times. Um, uh, if uh, um, your work, practically, because uh, in Italy uh, we know that uh, now. Social media concert, but uh, often people think that social media concert is something that is uh, 
always on Twitter and on Facebook to right. write. No, it's not easy. I can explain. Um, I mean, social media is a really broad term now. You know, when it, when social media first started, uh, it, it, a term social media came out of like Friendster and MySpace. So it's like in 2004 or three. Um, but now the whole web is social, so it's really hard to disconnect those things. When you're when you're on uh, an article in the New York Times, uh, you know, you click like, it connects to your Facebook, page, you can tweet from there. You, um, you know, we're, we're entirely integrated in social media and in our, in our phones and our lives. Um, you know, I, I think at some point we're going to stop having this artificial distinction between real life and digital life, and just sort of accept that that the digital layer is just another layer of complexity on top of an already complex world. And it's a very hard work. I think doing social media well is, 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 is definitely very hard work um, because it involves uh, you know, having, a, having a really clear strategy. Like, you know, what, what is your brand, organization, or politician trying to do, trying to accomplish? Setting those realistic goals. You know, understanding what social platforms uh, are best for what, and then and then and then the, the hardest part is creating the content that really really works. Because now there's just so much noise and so much content on the internet that you have to really get cut above the rest if you want to get your message out there. Mm -hmm. uh, Say about uh, I think uh, one of the most uh, important example of uh, success on social media uh, about uh, I think uh, about the, the picture of the brace uh, between Obama and yes. Michelle. And yes. How um, social media consumer think about uh, well, that, I this think, type of uh, yeah, trick? I mean, <laughs> I mean that, that that story is is pretty specific. Um, you know, my my uh, my friend Laura Olin, who is the head of social media on the, on the Obama campaign. Was, uh, you know, she tells the story that she was very exhausted that night, and um, she was just desperately trying to find a picture that she you know, really shared the exuberance of the moment, and uh, that was the one that she found. And it became one of the most successful uh, pieces of internet content of all time. Uh, that, that that one specific picture. But if you actually look back at the uh, the Republican convention, mm -hmm. one of my favorite moments, uh, social media moments in the campaign, uh, was uh, when Clint Eastwood was speaking to the empty chair, uh, saying Obama was that empty chair. And uh, the, camp the Obama campaign responded with a graphic that had Barack Obama in the Oval Office sitting in his chair, and it said, "The seat's taken." <laughs> yes, and then, yes, yes. We done that with Mayweather. Yeah, yeah. And that was a really fun, and, and, and showed how important it is to respond really quickly in our online. Because you, can, you know, I mean, they almost had that up before Clinton was really done speaking. That's how quickly they were able to do it. So they built an incredible organization that really understood uh, how to get approvals for things quickly, how to turn things around. And, and have a high quality product produced really fast and the Romney campaign never figured that out. Okay. But we are so I think that we have finished. I don't know, we have finished. Because uh, the car is stopped. So the car is stopped. Stop. So yeah. Well here we are. Well thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pleasure thank to meet you. you.